Hey guys, now continuing in a learning journey of deep learning, we are going to understand about the transfer learning. Till now, we have been training a deep learning model on our own. That means we started to build our own individual layers. And after we, we built our individual layers, we started adding neurons to it. And we specified the activation function. We specified the loss function. And we trained this model from scratch. That means we have, we have actually trained our model from nothing. That means we started the initializing our deep learning model with random parameters. And then we made sure that as the training progresses, we are reaching towards the solution. So that is what we have done over here. But in case of transfer learning, we are not going to train our deep learning model from scratch, guys. That means I'll make use of a pre-trained model. And then on that pre-trained model, I'm going to start it as a starting point. And there's a saying in deep learning, guys. So with the help of transfer learning, we can actually increase the productivity of our deep learning model training, guys. Okay, so it will actually help us in increasing the productivity of our deep learning model training. Now, as I mentioned already, I spoke about one important term that is called as pre-trained model. So let's see what does it mean? A pre-trained model, it's a model which has been already trained by someone to solve a similar problem. Now, what we are going to do in case of the transfer learning is, instead of training our model from scratch, observe this. Instead of training my model from scratch, I'm going to use that model which has been trained on a similar problem and I'm going to use it as a starting point and that is what is called as transfer learning. Okay, so that is a transfer learning guys. Now let me just give an example to give you more intuition as what is happening in case of this transfer learning. Let's assume you are building a classifier and this classifier is a binary classifier, binary classifier to, de to detect whether a person is uh, wearing a mask or not. Okay, wearing a mask or no mask. So this is a simple classifier that you are trying to build guys to check whether a person is wearing a mask or not. Now, as you can clearly see, this is a task and this is a unique task which I have come up to say, okay, whether this person, given this person's image, that is person's portrait, to say whether this person is wearing a mask or not. Now, obviously, in order to do this, I can train my neural network from scratch and then uh, make sure that I'm training everything. I have all the required data and I'm going over it. And let's assume I have millions of parameters. I'm training all those millions of prior parameters using my laptop or it could be EC2 instance that I have, which has a powerful CPU and the GPU. And let's assume I took uh, five days to train my model to get a decent accuracy of 60%. Okay, so this is the progress that I have got after training for five days and the accuracy that I've got is only 60%. Now, there's a, there is another alternative approach guys. The alternative approach is with, with the help of transfer learning. Now, let's see how does that alternative approach would look like. Now, in case of transfer learning, what we would do is we are going to make use of the model which has been trained on a similar task. Now, in my example, I'm performing the task of image classification. It's a plain, simple image classification. So do you agree with me, guys? Yes, isn't it? I'm performing a basic image classification to check whether a particular person is wearing a mask or not. Now, what I can do is in case of transfer learning, I'll look into the model repositories which are available, whether it could be TensorFlow or PyTorch and see whether I already have a pre-trained model where someone has already trained a model on the task of image classification. Now, when I look into the model repositories, I get to know that, hey, there is a model that's called as VGC16 and this VGC16 model is also based on convolutional neural network and this has been trained on a different data set which is called as ImageNet data set. Okay, and this ImageNet data set uh, has actually 1000 classes and this model has been trained on that complex data set which can classify a single image to whether it belongs to one of 1000 classes. Okay, so you have found a model which has been trained for a similar task in this scenario. It's a image classification. So what you will do in such scenario is, is in, in case of transfer learning, 
you will make use of the for the feature learning part that is the CNN layers. So you will extract the CNN layers because that is where the learning of the image features would happen. So you will extract the uh, features uh, that is feature learning uh, part of my VGC 16 and then you are going to modify the last layer in your VGC 16 model. The reason because as I mentioned already this VGC 16 uh, model has the uh, 1000 classes. So as a general rule what we would do is we'll just extract only the CNN layers part and we are going to add our own custom dense layers so that it is going to uh, learn the it is going to learn something which are specific to our business problem as well. So I'll use CNN layers from VGC 16. I'll add a box over here. So this is my pre-trained models uh, box guys. Okay, I'll say pre-trained uh, model. So these are the pre-trained model box which contains my pre-trained layers of VGC 16. And this is with my other dense layers. Okay, so my pre-trained layers are placed next to my dense layers. Now what I'll do during the training is, during the training, I'm going to set my deep learning model condition very strictly guys. I'll say it as, okay, don't you don't have to learn anything new. Just use whatever you have learned from your VGC 16 model at the convolution neural network layers, which means while collecting the important features from the image, Please don't uh, go for an adventure and start from scratch. So just use whatever the learnings that you may have. And it turns out, so this model is able to give me better accuracy than what I had got from the model which was trained for 5 days. An example is, let's say I have trained this model for 15 minutes by adding two dense layers which has 32 neurons and one last layer which has a single neuron for an output layer. And I have trained for 15 minutes and at the end of my 15 minutes, I'm getting the accuracy of 85%. Now, why am I getting this much of accuracy? The reason is simple guys. One of the complex thing that we will be having when we are working with deep learning neural network, especially while working with image data is extraction of image, extraction of important features of an image. So that's a complex task that we'll be having. Now, in case of which is a 16, this has been already trained on a very big data set. Just to give an example, let's say I have a class in my VGC 16 to detect whether, uh, whether, uh, whether cat is present in this image or not. I'm just coming up with my own example, whether this cat image is present in this VGC 16 or not. Now to identify the cat in a given image, my VGC 16 layer or this VGC 16 model has been trained to detect, okay, what is cat and what is not cat as well. Because let's say I have a cat and this cat is next to a TV or this cat is uh, present in an outside environment. So it should be able to identify where that cat is, isn't it? So it is able to identify the important features that are present in the image and distinguish what are all not the important ones. Now, when I give my model, that is this VGC 16 model with my similar task. Okay. So in my similar task, let's assume I have a person image and let's assume it has also learned some, some data about person as well in VGC 16 in such scenarios, when I send that person's uh, face or that person's image to this pre-trained model. So at least it, the expectation is, or the assumption is it will be able to identify the important features of the newly given image as well. Now that is the assumption that we are going to make. And along with that, that means after it extracts the, after it gives us the uh, output from this feature uh, extraction layer, that is from my CNN layers, we still have the trainable layers, that is two dense layers, which will be suitable for our task. Now the challenge is, now the challenge is always is, how to find those uh, similar train models now that we have the open source so we can just uh, google out and look for the uh, look for the developers who are, who are already trained on different different uh, models and use those models and see whether we have the required permission so that we can use it for our commercial projects all right folks so always the key challenge is finding the right models but as you clearly see, if I can find such models which has been already trained on a similar task, 
it will be a easier task for me. Okay, so with my CNN layers, I'll have my pre-trained model uh, layers and along with that, I'll add some dense layers. Now during the training, I'm going to switch off the training for the CNN layers and I'll just train on my dense layers, which means I'll have less number of parameters to train and I'll also have less number of layers to train. So this will help me to uh, faster training as well. And to name a few of the pre-trained models. So we have something called as AlexNet. We have something called as VGGNet, GoogleNet, ResNet, DenseNet, ShuffleNet V2 and MobileNet V2. So these are some of the examples for pre-trained model. Now, if I'm implementing any of this pre-trained model, the way that I would do is I'm going to first import that model as a whole and I'll just extract the feature extraction layer for each of this convolution neural network. Now let's assume it's a VGG16. So I'll extract the convolution neural network layers of this VGG16. And before I start training, I'm going to freeze these layers. Okay, I'm going to freeze these layers. And once I freeze these layers, I'll uh, concatenate or I'm going to add some dense layers along with my VG16 layers. And for these two dense layers, let's assume I'll say no freeze. That means trainable. And in my output layer, I'll have the required number of neurons as per my problem statement. Okay, now during the training, you can clearly see that the entire uh, image, uh, the feature engineering branch or this feature extraction branch. So this entire feature extraction layers are frozen, which means it's not being trained. It means it is just performing the prediction during the training. So as a result of this, I'll have only fewer neurons to train. Since I have very fewer neurons to train, obviously I can progress faster and I'll be able to get the better accuracy on the basis of learning that I already have with the help of transfer learning. Okay guys, so in the next video, we are going to look into the implementation of VG16 model as a, a pre-trained model and we'll implement it in a hands-on way. Now, before we do that, in the next video, first we have to go in depth and understand what are all these individual layers are present in this VG16 model. Okay, so I hope you like this video and I hope you now understood as what is happening in case of transfer learning. Now, if you are new to us, please consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you guys.